Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Against All Odds and as I say at the beginning of every podcast it's purely selfish because I get people on that inspire me um, so like I say it's all for my benefit and you get to listen as well so today I'm so pleased to welcome Harvey Help to the stage how are you my lovely? I'm good this is the first podcast I've ever done that I feel nervous for <laughs> I was just talking off camera like I'm going to talk about completely different stuff that I usually talk about um, as I kind of like transition through what I want to go through and just some things that have happened recently. So I'm like bricking it because the first I've only spoken to like my close friends and family. So this is like Look, me. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've spoken out this, this is what I love because I love like episodes that are just completely raw because we, we've not spoke about exactly what we're going to speak about. It's just us having a chat. I gave you five bullet points, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, and so it's completely authentic, so it's great. So I've known Harvey, which is saying for four years now, blimey, like, you've had, you've had a journey, mate, haven't you? We all have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember you, because you, it was about the sewing to start off, wasn't it, the sewing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now we're talking about brains and shit, and I'm, I'm yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we're going to talk about you, like, finding your values and everything in this episode, so I really resonate with you, like, having changing <laughs> yeah so like, yeah it's yeah a lot of like for me like what I'm talking about like or I've just kind of said today is going to be a lot of like career um identity uh losing confidence yeah um guilt bit of self-worth um but like I don't think there's I couldn't told sit there and tell you that I last listened to a podcast about someone losing their confidence Mm. so I want to cut like I'll, we'll get we'll get through it and it'll, it'll make sense as we go through but yeah I've got um I've got some notes because I'm I'm a a grade waffler I've <laughs> I love it <laughs> I I got I I had my first you, you know when they talk about leverage and yeah um like when when do you realize that like it's a real problem so I'm I'm an a grade waffler I could sit here and chew your ear off about anything for as long as I fucking wanted to but I got my first like sting with it. And I'm like, that's cost me an opportunity that I was like quite confident on. And I'm like, I, I buzzed it up because I just waffled too much. And they literally said, like, it was the most pos positive no that you can get, but this, fix that, you get it. And I'm like, Oh no. Okay. You know what though? This is great for a podcast because it's really awkward. You know, if you've got a guest where you ask them a question and then they have to you in one sentence, it's a little bit awkward because yeah, I it's, it's trying to it. balance it's trying to balance <laughs> the thing. I don't like I, I, I know that I'm a I'm a waffler and I talk a lot, but it's also like I I've got me bullet points just to keep me on track. <laughs> I I'm, love I'm, it. I'm not so yeah, it was this time like back along that actually it's just completely <laughs> irrelevant to anyone or anything. Um, <laughs> So, like, for, for, for you and for me and the listeners, uh, yeah, it's going to be a matter of let me, let's uh, keep us on a, keep, keep trying to keep me on the straight and narrow. Yeah, okay, well, okay, we can do this, we can do this. Cool. Right, so, <clears throat> you had a bit of a, a change, was it about nine months ago, did you say? Yeah, so I can give you the date, it was Saturday the <clears throat> 2nd of December 2023. Wow, that's, so that's, that was a big, big light bulb moment then. Mm. But, wow with personal personal development and working on yourself it it looks and on the other side it certainly feels all airy fairy and oh this was amazing and it was so easy like real change hurts mm -hmm. it's painful yeah it's great things and that's kind of where this all kind of started for me and a lot of it had come from probably unintentional neglect of just what the problem was for me um so yeah I'll take it back Saturday the 22nd of December 2023 um I was at Bath Christmas Markets now I'm I'm a little southerner boy so I'm like Bath is one of my favorite places in the country I absolutely love it um but for about three weeks every November and December carnage in shoes because it's the christmas markets they are internationally known for being amazing which to be fair they are um so my girlfriend works in bath so one saturday i went down with her for a bit of a jolly 
um, bit of a day out. Um, and I was like, oh, I've got a load of client work and video editing I need to do. So I'm going to go and do that. You do you do your work. We'll have a pot around the Christmas markets afterwards mm-hmm. with, you, with your dad. Um, and something hadn't been right for a while and I couldn't put my finger on it. I've been in this weird kind of like mood for a few weeks. Kind of, we went on holiday to Dubai. Absolutely yeah. blind. I'll get onto that in a little bit. Um, completely mangled my brain, but in a really good way. Um, and I've just been a bit like, there's holiday blues and like, oh, I miss the sunshine in the middle of November. Um, yeah, that it gave it gave me a wobble, but it was kind of at the point where this isn't like, oh, you're a bit gutted, you're back home. It's some, like, there, there was something in there. Um, and it comes up to that point where I was, ended up walking round Bath. All I wanted to do was sit down on my laptop in a coffee shop and do some work. Now, obviously it's rammed, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I'm going to all the independents, I'm going to Costa, Pret, Starbucks. Everywhere is absolutely rammed. My laptop's a little bit of a princess, so it needs to be plugged in unless it's been like plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> no girl, she's still still going strong. I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep her plugged in at all, all costs. So I was I was like, well, I really need to kind of go to um go to you know, go to somewhere that is a plug. I'm wandering around the city centre. I probably walked around and around and around in circles for about 50 minutes, maybe an hour, and just got more and more and more raging and I'm like isn't that I sit here now it isn't that deep I just couldn't find a coffee shop when I knew it was going to be busy you muppet like what what are you thinking about but I just kept going round and round and round I sat down I tried to do these client programs I, tr- I was trying to do all like my you know personal tech trainer fitness stuff at the time and I just couldn't focus and mm. I was still so angry so pissed off and I couldn't work out what it was. So you and I are very, very familiar with journaling. And yeah. I just, in my in my notes section my, on my laptop, I just wrote the journal prompt of what is pissing me off. And I just started writing. And I kind of caught myself after maybe about 10, 15 minutes. And I'm like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this properly. And then I went back and scribbled out everything that was <clears throat> bullshit. That was yeah. just, that didn't really matter. I, yeah, yeah, went went through it with a fine tooth comb. But then that allowed me to almost the, the cowards to clear and just these floodgates opened. And I just started reeling off how I really felt. Yeah. And... Like I, I feel emotional thinking about it now because, and you've spoken to Alex Myers, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I had years ago in lockdown 784. Um, he, <laughs> he, he sat, we, we, I had him on my podcast back in the day, and he said, What's scarier than the whole truth? The truth that you can't deny. And I'm like, Yeah, I, I probably wasn't developed on my mindset, you know, personal development journey to really understand that mm. that moment I I think I got it yeah but slap in the face yeah it hurts it stings me heart mm. yeah. and I was sat there just a shell of a man because it everything had become clear I felt un, you know uninspired I felt completely unfulfilled I was playing small which I'd already kind of identified. Um, I wasn't having the impact that I wanted to. I was doing work that, like, it got, it was past the point where I'm like, I can't just tell myself that I need to keep going for it. You know, six more months. Yeah. Now. It just realized, I, it, it just hit me that what I was doing, the fitness, the personal training stuff, like I've just fallen out of love with it in yeah. a in a big way. And I was like not in a good way. And you know, I went and went, went and met my girlfriend after afterwards and 
it was the you know when you see your partner and you're like what the fuck like, <laughs> yes. like the other side of the street that like <laughs> you've had a good day have you because that was me i like black eyes just <laughs> with sunk into my head just like you know was in a really weird weird place and i just completely poured my heart out to myself um, yeah yeah and like i've realized things of you know and from speaking to friends and, and mentors and stuff like that i realized that i had the knowledge to grow my fitness business that wasn't the problem i knew what i needed yeah. to be doing but why wasn't yeah. I doing it? because yeah. i couldn't face fulfilling it yeah 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 I completely resonate with you on that. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, you know, you, you, however many thousands of pounds a month, you know, I've done the course, I've done the study, I've listened to all of the podcasts, I've listened to every, you know, I, I've been, I've been to that place, I, I've done that, I've been on loads of retreats, I've watched hours and hours of trainings, you know, paid trainings, I've been on, um, like, uh, like the day, like, uh, day trainings and stuff like that, seminars. I've never got to where I wanted to be or got to these things. Yeah. Reason, part of the reason being, no, don't want to do it. I don't want to have to deliver that. Yeah. But yeah, I get that. And then, but you kind of ignore it, don't you? Yeah. And I like, <clears throat> it wasn't, it wasn't a new thing. And when, you know, like I think back to that Dubai trip, but Dubai trip, one of the best weeks of my life, fell in love with the place. If I could just, and go forever I would I loved yeah. it but what it made me realize is how small I was playing yeah you go to a place like that there is the glitz there is the glamour but it's all about people doing well it's all mm. about you going you know work hard play hard yeah and what you can have and you start to see the life in the way that it is and you know, people go into it with such like, you know, like that's that's the big the big dream for them, and all of us yeah. have never got. Yeah. And ever then, like that, subconsciously triggered something in my head that came to a head on that day. Yeah. And as rubbish as it was. I always had it in the back of my mind that it was a gift mm -hmm. and that it was like it needed to happen. I needed to realize that for me to move forward. I needed to have that setback to move forward, which was, which was challenging. But then what it also kind of, I found for me, it, it just left this massive hole. I um, was about to say that. <clears throat> like what yeah. you've, you've got, cause you spent so much doing this, this and this. And then all of a sudden you have this so many moment. Thousands of pounds, so much energy, time, years in, in that in that career, and it was always gonna naturally transition into something. It never was. It never mm. ever was in, in in hindsight. And you know, I wanna do this so I can, you know, move and then I'll be moved online and all of this stuff. It was never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. And then it just left this massive gap of mm emptiness apathy uncertainty um and i was i was kind of dumbfounded i didn't really know what to do what you, yeah what your next what, step was yes and you know it's it's one of those ones where you don't want to dump it on people but you're like that was that was the reality of it and there was a level of like i look back and there was a level of guilt of i knew that i wasn't in it but I didn't have an alternative. Yeah. There wasn't. And to to start off with, if I'm brutally honest, I probably wasn't in the headspace to try and fix the problem. I know that I've been told told that before with by our common mentor, mentor Paul. He's like, mm -hmm. sort yourself out because you ain't fixing anything like that. Sometimes you need to get yourself back on your yeah. feet before you can try and fight. Like there's no point in trying to trying to do no. it from before. Now for me like that was yeah there was this long there was this gap and you know things were being said and it, I knew that okay well part of the issue was was you know dealing with 
you know, de dealing with customers, you know, and and things like that, where I, I found some of some elements of that really challenging and just like I was so exhausted with the same conversations that, you know, I, I was like, OK, well, do you know what? I'm just going to go and take the pressure off myself for a bit because yeah. I don't think I can do it. Yeah. You can. You can. I'm a big believer in that. You, you can actually do it. You, it just doesn't feel like it at the time. Mm. And the way that I felt in in that specific moment is, you know, like there was this guilt, there was this failure. I was still turning up to work, still doing all of this stuff. But, you know, and this ultimately comes down to your values that you you don't, there wasn't that, like authenticity there wasn't that i want to be here yeah and when you're <laughs> yeah. in, that, in that kind of space like I, I, I initially my thought was like oh how have you let this happen how how's this you know like oh you're better than this but ultimately you know it it happened so much, like i look back at the way that i probably behaved in that time and you know focusing on all the wrong things focusing on what i don't what i don't want what's not working what you know everything that's not going that's not going well for me at that precise moment in time it just amplifies and then it's easy to just snipe down at people and, yeah oh well they're doing this and they're doing that and then you get into this comparison and in that process that just absolutely not only have I had this kind of identity away I'd have this sort of self implosion now yeah. in hindsight I, I feel almost embarrassed to admit that because I should know better, but I didn't. Like that had never been tested, like under any real strain. And yeah, then, yeah. Then this situation happened, and all of a sudden, I'm like, kind of like going in on myself, and notice how I'm going, how I went backwards, and how I'd picked up and lent into such unhelpful behaviors for me that were so destructive and and negative and have such a bad impact on not only me mentally but also like physically in terms of health yeah just body and appearance and everything like that like and then that's a separate issue in itself yeah, yeah. sometimes you know i what i've learned on my journey is sometimes i need a bloody good slap <laughs> yeah don't we all <laughs> don't we all <laughs> and one thing I will say, and I will give her an absolutely humongous sh shout out for this one, is the one and only Kath Turnbull, who basically was just like, grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and was like, right, do this, then do this. So she got me to go and do the, um, go back and do, redo my values training. And looking into that thing where, you know what don't you need to be motivated to do what is easy what yeah. is what can you do without being asked to do so you know like I look at it for, for me um like it made me realize well so much of what I was doing felt really hard and almost painful to do like mm. I was I'm trying to force myself to do stuff yeah and then I hated myself yeah. even more because I'm like <clears throat> just qualified and then when you're, you're in that you know self-critical space when you and then you amplify that negative emotion and when everything seems like that in that precise second in time it's so easy to spiral into that yeah just forget it and then you get it's just like I need to break free I just need to be chaotic to take my mind off of this and go and do stupid stuff or just be incredibly impulsive to feel something yeah yeah I don't mean hit for seconds and you know like one thing I will say is it, this this sort of stuff what I found it, it it does take time it does take time to rebuild um and you know especially when you go and like for me I've obviously gone through this and just tried to work my way out of it um there's bits where maybe the you know I I can sit here and say yeah the effort didn't match the ambition. I was sitting here saying how 
shit I felt. But realistically, at that precise moment in time, was I doing what I knew that I could do to mm. pull me out of it? Probably not. Um, yeah. But yeah, again, I went and was told under no uncertain, uncertain circumstances, right, you're going to do this. You're going to do it tonight. And then you're going to ring me in the morning and tell me what you found out. So, <laughs> Sergeant Turner, yes, miss. Because <laughs> so I was terrified for my life. Um, and, you know, it's 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 asking things. And I kind of wanted to throw in a few questions. That's why I wrote them down. Um, yeah. Of like how to find out your values. So like, and I'm not going to sit here and make anyone do like anything too crazy. And I don't want to take over the podcast with like, right, do your values. <laughs> but it's it's looking at things like, you know, simple questions like what don't you need to be reminded to do? Yeah. Where do you spend your money? Where do you spend your free time? What do you look at? What do you search for on your phone? You know, what do you do on the weekends? What do you get excited about? What's easiest for you to talk about? You know, like, and for me, I looked at like, okay, so what do I find it really easy to talk about? I find it really easy to talk about sports. I find it really easy to, you know, organize trips around going to watch the football or the rugby or, you know, organize an event with friends to watch the Grand Prix. I find that incredibly easy to do. You know, I value coffee. I value going to all the pretentious coffee places and, and you know. Me too. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Going to the fancy places and, and sitting there and trying it and like sitting there and just like, like tasting it rather than like. Enjoying the moment. Yeah. <laughs> get it down my throat. You know, like I value my relationship really high, highly. And at the time, me and my partner were long distance. And, you know, I never, I never forgot to organise when I'm when I was going to see her next I never yeah. I never forgot to organize you know like travel plans I never forgot to organize stuff like that you know I didn't need to be reminded to listen to podcasts that's something that I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy you know imagine me who likes to talk a lot with podcasts and providing entertainment and education for people putting it together oh my god ah oh, <laughs> um, you know travel as well like yeah you know, I didn't, we've been on a couple of little mini breaks this year to really obscure places. Like, I don't need to be motivated to go in the Sky Scanner. Yeah. My back tells me, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> not You've just got, just moved into, into a house. Stop looking at flights. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's those things like that. I don't need to be motivated to, you know, find out about, you know, places like we went to montenegro like who really knows what montenegro is it's bloody awesome by the way go <laughs> i was about to say i don't even know where that is <laughs> yeah, honestly like amazing and like little things like you know finding out a little bits about the culture what to be aware of you know like in that those little things that i've then gone and done and found out through my like research by looking into it by watching videos reading things speaking to people about the thing that I value highly, I found out little things that have then led to be highlights of trips. Yeah, yeah. So like it's it's things like, you know, in, in Montenegro, where we went, we went to a place called Couture. There's, you know, there's like a it's right on the coast, but it's like a weird like inland thing, and you can get like boat rides out and it's incredible. And you go to these cool, like cool caves, and then you can go to like this island and you know, you find out about these they obviously give you like a bit of a bit of a rundown on what, what things are and you know if i'm finding these things and it's just like to me i just find it incredibly interesting and i don't need to be yeah i don't need to be force myself to go and do the research for it to go and find yeah. out that i don't need to to you know motivate myself to uh, you know arrange getting uh myself rugby tickets i don't need to yeah motivate myself to to go and find out when the next when the next grand prix is on yeah i give a toss like so it doesn't it doesn't and it doesn't feel like i'm expending loads of energy doing it little things like that and yeah leaning leaning into those things um but yeah like i kind of i think that's so important to be to reminded and not like 
get too when it comes to values not get too caught up in being superficial it is supposed to be incredibly selfish it is supposed to be about you it's not supposed to be about your um like what you think they are that's something that yeah. i realized early part of my personal development journey is i thought or i thought it should be like this don't work like that people Do you know what I, i'm so glad you mentioned values because it's you hear so many like people talk about values and it'll be like oh loyalty reliability honesty and things like that it's like that's not values that's not your values and it gets very missold you hear a lot of podcasts and a lot of public speakers and mm. nlp trainers talk about values like that and i just think you know it's, it's no a... wonder people are struggling <laughs> you like in some thing you know you might be looking for a relationship you might be you know like i like this characteristic it's a bit like how you might want like blonde hair or you know tattoos or whatever yeah like it's it, it's a characteristic you know someone can be reliable until they're not yeah Your values are incredibly hard to change yeah true true values yeah um, and yeah it's i think when you come back to it, like, it, it is a word that really the word value there's a few words that always really prick my ears up in like situations that like I might be at work and someone might mention the words values and I'm like I'm instantly interested in that conversation yeah like buzzing if they're using it in like the correct way <laughs> like, yeah. and I love it and I'm like let's not talk about it because I want to talk about mine um, <laughs> all those times where you know you, you hit you hear hear it coaching as well like I had a I, I had a conversation a few weeks ago about someone think, t- talking about coaching and I'm like you my friend do not have a clue you do not know <laughs> yes. what this is <laughs> like sending someone a pdf document is not coaching um but that's another story for another day and I, I mean if I if I look at between so you know we're, we're sat here recording this in August um rewind the clock to you know december like what's kind of happened in there like um i don't think that that's for me i don't think that's the sort of thing that you know happens overnight unless you have yeah. like a major, major realization but sometimes the execution takes a little bit longer than you would like and that's certainly something that i found it's not an overnight fi- fix and it does just take a bloody long time something that i found really helpful for me and i do feel like like I'm kind of stepping on your toes a little bit with this one, and Go you're on. going to turn and say, "You're on. you're wrong with that one." Is <laughs> stimulating your brain. Now you, yes. I've watched at least one of your trainings. Um, I think it was the one you did around like I think it was Valentine's Day, like earlier in the year, about oh, like, the stress brain and stress and all of that, and it absolutely fascinating. Like again, fascinating thing, but it's again taking. It's sometimes it's just taking the most simple elements of something. Um, you know, like I something I found incredibly helpful to improve where my head's been at over the fact, you know, I that's really easy to just stay in this destructive cycle of negativity, starting to pull other people down. Cause that's something that I'd not really thought or felt for a long time. And yeah. then I realized that, oh, actually, but that having happened and going through that and almost behaving in a way that I now feel quite embarrassed about, like, or I'm not going to say regret because that kind of says that I'm not taking responsibility for it. Cause I am, cause I, uh-huh. actually, I, can, I can pinpoint times where I'm like dickhead. Um, but something that I certainly found has helped that has really, is just using my brain. Yeah. Actually thinking. Um, so mm-hmm. you know, I, I've I, I've mentioned rugby a few times, and probably before that point that, that we said about a minute. Ago, so what is it? Uh, Second of December. Yeah. When couldn't give a monkey's balls about rugby. Now really? I, I went to the Premiership final. I am. Um, oh wow. Yeah. You know I have a vested in, in, interest because my partner works for a club, but like for me, I'm like, oh my god, obsessed with it. I started right. playing. I've started, um, you know, follow, following the following the team, and you know, understanding it, and 
but I I could hold my own in terms of you know there's like the, quite a big social element and I found that a lot of my, my people my 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 I can't be even going to say it and it's such an ick tribe is quite yeah. the people uh, quite <laughs> the trip people um you know I and I just started to learn stuff learn stuff about managing people learning stuff about email marketing uh stuff about relationship with food and it just occupied my headspace and yet is it a bit of a distraction totally but what I found was that it was really helpful just to kind of you know break the loop yeah break that negative cycle of shit break it so I can actually focus on what I need to be focusing on yeah absolutely again another thing that I found worked really really well and kind of was always part of a plan anyway was kind of like changing my location so you know it's like you can if you move a plant three foot that plant can then either die or thrive mm. based on sunlight or stuff like that and I, I I had this vision of um like my grandma's house when I was when I was little she used to have like this I like, probably like a like not cheese cheese plant that's a plant isn't it like a like a plant yeah that yeah one, she had one of them at the top of the stairs and I remember once it was really withered and then I, I went back like a few weeks later and it was like massive but like the plated move that it was on yeah probably watered it and she probably you know maybe changed the soil or something like that but ultimately she's probably moved that a few foot and it's got more sunlight and now it's living its best life yeah I love that analogy. Yeah, I've changed location and that's just another, it's another challenge, but it's also quite inspiring that, you know, I I can, when I when I go home and I, I hate saying it because I feel like such a dick saying it and it makes me sound really big time when I'm, when I'm really not, like I've just worked <laughs> in a town in a very public facing role with a social media presence for a long time. And I, I, I could like walk around like as store Tesco's at home and like bump into three or four people that I knew. Mm-hmm. Someone, I might not be able to pick their name out. But I know know them or recognise them or enough to have a bit of small talk with. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. I don't know anyone. Not only have I moved to from a town, like little towns to a city, it's, that's just different. It's, but it's also there's an opportunity to move into, you know, like to go to different places on the weekend, try out these different places. And it just, again, it gives your brain something to to think about and, and clog and whir on. And feel free to jump in, A, if I'm talking shit, or B. No, you're absolutely bang on, because I think <laughs> sometimes you can get stuck in your environment. And that's certainly where I feel that and- I was yeah. yeah yeah you can absolutely get stuck in your environment and then well, that's not anything becomes... negative about it i just probably needed to change yeah I'm because I, your brain does and so i've got a really no, a, a quote that i use a lot where it says okay. the brain awakens in the new because we we need new and like new experiences new places you know it's it is a muscle if we don't well it's not a muscle it's an organ but it acts like a muscle so if we don't do anything new new experiences learning new new things going new like moving just shrinks like a muscle like if you don't use it so that essentially is what i tried to say for the past 10 minutes (laughs) (laughs) 20 seconds (laughs) i love it mate and and do you know what it's it's exciting it's yeah do you do, and that's what it is like like I felt like I'd lost me like yeah. I, I know I have an energy and a vibe that is me and I thought it had gone I thought the flame was out but there's been these little things that have just started for this flicker to come back and I feel like I don't want to grow back into the person that I was because that did not serve me I need to evolve and become a new person an even better version of myself. I need to evolve off in a different direction. I need to learn from my mistakes. I need to, you know, like a lot of these things are warnings. Yeah, absolutely. Like driving on the motorway, rumble strip. I do it all the time. But your billions get shaken out as you're going down the motorway like that. And you're like, oh, slightly little to the left there. 
the old yeah, yeah. whatever way it is getting yourself back in back in the straight and narrow and it kind of brings me back to like even those what that's kind of made me realize is as i've kind of done each of these things that are kind of like well that's a problem i fixed it that's a problem i fixed it i've gone through like a handful of these things and i'm like um i don't have any excuses anymore <laughs> that's quite scary isn't it <laughs> yeah i i've just melted all my excuses because it was right. this, then it was this, and then it was that, and oh, I can't do this because of this, and I'm I'm taking the mick out of myself here, and I, I'm, I'm myself not very long ago, but all those it's just melted away, and I'm a bit like I feel a bit naked, but I'm like <laughs> it's t- time to do it because you know like I, I've I've said it now I've said it now I've said all <laughs> these things, and I'm like all of a sudden I can't do it, but you yeah. know. That was the issue, that was the issue, that was the that issue. Okay, but then I also proved to myself that I can move forward and deal with all these problems at the same time. Yeah. So there's 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 that there's that side to it. And it goes back to, you know, you know, real growth just it isn't pretty. It hurts, <laughs> it's hard. There's times where you you aren't alone. Like that's what I realized more like in the last few months that I'm not alone. Not mm-hmm. everybody hates me. Yeah. I hate myself, so I'm projecting that onto other people. So I don't it doesn't feel like I'm saying it to myself. But like this real life shit, when we talk about real life stuff, there's like that there isn't just a one fit one thing that solves loads of things. It helps, but it, it isn't like on your computer and oh, I can't get rid of this thing on my screen. I Google it. I do the one thing, problem solved. Never have to worry about it again. Or, I have, you know, the, you know, the radio is not working on the car. I turn it off. I turn it on again. Oh, all of a sudden it's turned itself back on and it's acting like it, there was never an issue. Unfortunately, we're a little bit too complicated for that. We're a little bit too complicated for our own good. We, we yeah, yeah. everything really easy for ourselves. But then when we look internally and it's like, Oh, um, you know, I'm going to follow these three top tips that I've seen online. And it, I was, so I listened to the Tony and Nikki V one the other day, head fell off. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That was one of my favorite podcasts I've listened to in a long time. But one thing that Tony said was that they had a complaint from a magazine that someone had written in and said, well, I did step number four and my relationship broke down because of it. And I'm like, and what they said was like it isn't that one singular thing, yeah, that leads to the problem being solved. It it's m- more complicated than that. Yeah, yeah. You have to keep doing it. You don't just do it once. Yeah, you know, it might have been I... take your partner out on a date. Okay, cool. I'm going to do that once. <laughs> <laughs> you take your partner out more than that. You know, <laughs> go in for a day, go to the cinema, go to the big. Like, you know, there's a million and one ways that you can do it, you can look at it like that. But, you know, it's what I'm, the point I'm trying to say here is, you know, one single thing will not solve just a multitude of other things. It can help. And it does, like, for me, if I, I was very much in that mindset, this next program, this next most mentor, this next coach, this next thing will do it. And just this, just this always like a cycle of just like real excitement, optimism, papers off, shit. And it just goes through uh, these waves. And I used to just go for this same pattern all time, just absolutely like banging off of, you know, pillar to post and realizing why, like, I didn't, it, sometimes you need to, have a you know reality slap to realize what it is and you know if it's the thing that I kind of I'm kind of sat here now when I think about a lot is like you know if that's if I'm thinking that and feeling that quite a lot of other people probably are too yeah absolutely mate scary because I I, think I thought I was screwed yeah but you've you've noticed that loop Mm. Which once is really you start noticing loops and patterns, 
you start yeah. to do things. I yeah. li- came up with something that I never thought I would say the other day. And I'm like, I'm like, what? It like, it's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> just like my face. And I was like, and I'm like, okay, my, my, my delivery wasn't brilliant with that in terms of words. So source for that. But it just come out. I was like, oh my God. Like, I've just, <laughs> I'd, I'd kind of unintentionally flex the muscle and it, then it come out uh, un- subconsciously. And I'm like, that's like, that's excitement. That's proof that something's clearly working. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Then, you know, you then, keep, then that makes keeping going even easier. Um, and like, I wish I could have a sexier, easier way to do it and, and, and kind of put it across but like fundamentally uh things like this are very hard to swallow not usually mm-hmm. my thing but the sooner you swallow it yeah the, like the better yeah do you know what i i did a, a podcast with uh, brandon block a few weeks ago it's not out yet but um, he was so he does a lot of work on self-awareness and he his his thing was uh self-awareness is great but once you become self-aware, you can't become unaware. <laughs> so you can't ever stop it. And he was like, so you'll constantly question yourself and then you'll start questioning other people. He was like, but the alternative is that you are completely unaware and that you are wandering around unaware Not- with no problems. So there is there's a good side and a bad side of being self-aware because the people that aren't aware are just even though they're pissed off they're just thinking that's normal and just wandering around where if you are self-aware you can't put it down (laughs) yeah and whatever that thing is and I was chatting to someone about it the other day that as painful as it is it's, it's almost like picking a frying pan up after you've used it straight away but like it it hurts but like in this instance don't go and do that and like blame it on me by the way like (laughs) there so i don't i'm not getting sued but picking up and holding it and some you just need to feel it sometimes and do that really difficult work and even if it is putting it in your words like if i sat there and actually thought like what's the journal prompt i need in that particular moment not what what's pissing me off mm. but sometimes you just need to have it in a really simple language to get that over the line and you know you say journaling it has a really negative rap of like little girls and their diaries yeah like I I, I get that but like for the, me a big thing is a I, I, I could sit here and give you a hundred lessons that I've learned over the over the past nine months but one of them is just just curiosity give it a try yeah absolutely you just put it back down again yeah yeah it's one of those things where i would say to people when you are on it's not dear diary stuff obviously but when you journal you can't tell it's working until you stop doing it and then you notice that it's working that's what i've noticed like you know i've got i've got a planner here with not many pages filled in with it and then it's wondering why do i feel chaotic yeah yeah why do i feel all over the place yeah. But I think it's part of it is as well and probably years worth of experience is it doesn't count, but I think you can go through that kind of like journaly process in your head as well. Because I was do- I can't remember where I was the other day, but I just realized something. I think I was walking back from the corner, got like the corner shop. I had to go and get some milk. And I was like, wow, that's it. I've got it you know, then calm myself down because I'm like, this is not the answer to all of your problems, but it's a step in the right direction. I realise yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Now we spoke about <clears throat> limiting beliefs. Yes. Let's touch on that because I know, do you know what? I It's not been the well, but last three months I've only realised, I thought I was the only one with limiting beliefs, but I'm doing masterclasses left, right and centre to different groups and companies at the minute because it's everywhere. Yeah, like, I 
again, I think it comes down back to like purely ad lib now. Like I think limiting, realizing that your leaves are, are limiting is probably a self-awareness thing. And like you almost kind of realizing that, you know, that thought isn't serving you. But, you know, when, when we when we come back, come down to, you know, I think challenging those beliefs. So once you, once you realize that, hmm, maybe that's not as true as I thought it was, it's kind of like challenging it of like, okay, well, what if the opposite? Mm. And just getting curious of like, how could that be possible? Like what evidence have I got to support that belief? Now, this is something like, again, talk about something fresh, like, questioning limiting beliefs limiting beliefs is something that's like i'm almost doing live but not this second but actually no that's a lie that's a lie because that's why <laughs> i'm nervous i like i don't believe i didn't believe like i was fucking flabberg sorry i didn't i mean swear. <laughs> you can swear as much as you want mate <laughs> i was rather shocked by the um by you inviting me on why i was just shocked i was completely like <laughs> she got this the right person and like she's got to kind of go through it now go through with it because she's she's tagged me instead of someone else i was i was hey, really fully, <laughs> deadly serious deadly deadly serious right, okay okay i i was shocked i was like she's sure but then i'm like right. okay. she's not gonna have done that by accident she could she's clearly seen something that I've done before or mm -hmm. speaking to me before that gives her evidence to believe that I can come and give a good talk or podcast or whatever we want to call it. Now, I don't need to believe that right now, but I have evidence to the contrary. Like, yeah, yeah. and that people might listen and they might send me horrible, horrible messages and tell me that I need to go and live <laughs> But nevertheless, yeah, yeah, you know, like that was, I didn't know how to get that in there, but I wanted, I wanted to say it because I think it's really relevant of, I, again, I, if I think about my thought process that I've been through over the past however many months, like why would anyone want to listen to me drivel on about how shit my life is but it's not it's about how i believe i'm on the sorry i think there's birds like inside the house which is <laughs> not ideal <laughs> so i'm sorry about that room for quick interlude there um <laughs> uh yeah but like it's it's like what what can i what can i offer about about because I, I don't want to sit here and talk to you about squats and protein and I don't believe that I, that's where I can bring any value anymore. Like, that's why I'm at a point now where I don't have any fitness clients anymore. No yeah. clients, no online coaching fitness clients, none. I still work in the industry, but I, 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 don't, I don't do that because, you know, I, I believe that I've come to the end of my, my tenure with that. Um, and... You know, I can't offer what I once did. And I think that comes from a level of self-awareness. And, you know, when if you've done Coaching Academy, haven't you? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I, when that was a, that was a, probably another thing that maybe planted, I realised when I did that, I'm like, okay, well, I want to do something more than just squats, protein. Let's get you motivated. Um, yeah, yeah it's very rarely those sort of things and again it comes it just shows the level of thinking of you know one thing's going to solve all my problems it can bloody out but you need to then in my opinion be willing to do the other stuff yeah absolutely and in that for me i kind of come to the end of that you know and if you wanted me to come on and do a fitness talk, wait, whatever, I'd have been like, nah. You know what? You when you messaged me about the the bullet points, what you wanted to talk about, 
I was excited because I believe there's a lot of people that were in that situation of you in December in Bath but they think they need to stay there because they've invested it could be invested a lot of money it could be invested a lot of time um it's a little bit of like pride as well because you don't want to look like you're giving up uh, yeah, so you'll stay... yeah, there's yeah the so that I'm, I'm giving up what does yeah, that make it makes me a like quitter. they'll see it as a fail <laughs> you know and I th it's probably worse for men as well because you know got a bit of ego there you know and I, when you messaged me saying I want to talk about this, this and this, I was like, bang, we've got it. Because I do believe that a lot of people are struggling like that, that feel that they are stuck, that they can't move, that they have possibly like a little bit old to change direction now, so they've just got to get on with it. And you know as well as I do, when one, of your, one area of your life is shit, it will affect all of your life. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I was I was an awful partner. Yeah, uh, yeah. Points. I was an awful, um, you know, awful, awful child. I say child, but you know, like with my parents and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Colleague, just miserable, so and so. Like it's horrible to be around, and yeah, it's. I just wanted to. I like. I'm so glad that you've obviously given me the platform to say it as well. Like. For me, it's it's to have that discussion, and 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 kind of say it. And I, I wanted to kind of come up with the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, about what's gone on. Like some of it, you know, not it's not particularly. It probably doesn't help you, you know, how you want to be perceived. But I'm like, yeah, oh well, cool. Yeah, <laughs> what are you gonna do? I, I like. But then I'm also I like, like your... if, I'm, if I'm thinking it you know, like, might people not think that anyway? Yeah. Might people, when I they thought I, when I have been doing well, I have been flying, when I've been at my absolute best, you know, running a successful business, having massive impact, you know, and it, it was something that, you know, that like, part of my life was something I valued incredibly highly, that part of my career that I valued incredibly highly. Do you not think even then people were like, it's full of shit? You know? Yeah. Like, that's going to happen anyway. So it's it's less about this noise. It's more about here and almost the noise in your own head and making sense of that, breaking it down into something that's that's easy to understand and giving, giving you the freedom. I don't quite have the words for it, but like I said, yes. this, is, this is new for me. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm an expert. All I'm saying about is what's happened over the last nine, nine months and what's worked for me what's not worked for me yeah I love the fact as well that you've been completely honest about self-development because I think a lot of people that aren't in it will think it's all really fluffy stuff where you just mark your wins down and you have to be grateful and things like that when the reality of it is it's bloody hard work you get to meet yourself literally in the mirror like you've never seen yourself before and it's awkward difficult and yeah hard <laughs> so Thank you for coming out and saying that. Because honestly, I, I feel really emotional now. Like, yeah, I, I honestly like, believe. I, I told myself a second. I'm like, you're not current on camera today, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I honestly believe that if you are going to work on yourself, you do need you do need balls because it's it can be mm, and scary. Mum, like, I didn't. It was. And just, you know what? When I first got into it four years ago, I think you know I just got I'd gone through a shit time in my life. I was like, oh there's nothing left to lose let's just give it a whirl I I was quite shocked after about three weeks in yeah. I was like, but it's something I've never regretted so I would definitely urge people to be self-aware rather than unaware the journey's not easy but it's worth it in the end yeah it is isn't it <laughs> so what what have you got in the pipeline for the future um secret is it <laughs> i want to be the first to know when you before uh, you know <laughs> I, I, I might tell you when the camera when there's not that little red recorder up there oh, oh, okay but okay we could do that i want to for now okay it's a really so the last... ending isn't it so what's in the pipeline 
I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a world exclusive. Um, right, so I do ask everybody as well. I hope you are, you're being self-aware. You should be able to answer this easy. Oh, okay. Harvey, tell me three good things about yourself. We've just run out of time, by the way. Have you seen that? No, that's fine. It's still recording. Oh, it's still recording? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Clock, I was like, I, I kind of thought, oh, I'm going <laughs> to... Like I, I spotted this as you happen. <laughs> Three good things about myself. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly capable. Um, I'm, I'm incredibly <laughs> capable. Um, I have a knack for. Like working it out. Yeah. And I don't mind dropping the bomb when things need to end. I love that. I do love that. That's yeah, yeah I like that. Thank yeah. you, Harvey, oh, sure. for being so authentic, honest, <clears throat> and raw. And it wasn't that painful, was it? <laughs> I I'm <laughs> knackered. I am knackered now. <laughs> like, I feel very emotionally drained. Like, like I said, this is the first time that I've ever, apart from, like, you know, like, my partner, some family members, some very close friends, I haven't spoken to anyone about this. So it's also kind of, like, me ripping the Band-Aid off a little bit. Um, I think part of me in the future, maybe it's something in this direction, I don't know. Um, mm. But, yeah, like, I know... It's yeah, I'm I can now feel myself about to go a bit waffly. So I'm just like <laughs> shut up because you can't tell a relevant story. And it's like, I've probably done some quite good work here. And then say so there was this time that you know I, I was here and then this happened and and it's completely irrelevant to anyone or anything that we're talking about. And uh Do you know what? I, I'm just gonna add something on about a limiting belief. So we know where I was at okay, school. Okay, okay, okay. All my school reports said I spoke too much. Every single one of them. Didn't matter what subject I was in, Amy talks too much. Now I earn money from talking, so. <laughs> yeah. Just want it out there, you know. Like, <laughs> believe it or not, when, especially at the kind of like earlier ages, I was incredibly quiet. I didn't say anything. Now, I now, like, I know naturally that I I'm, can be incredibly extroverted and I can be, like, talk a lot. But also, like, you know, with, you know, my recent kind of, like, self-discovery, whatever you want to call it, like, I also know when to shut up. And I know yeah. sometimes you don't need to talk. Sometimes it's that's not going to help. And sometimes when you don't want to talk and you need... And, you, you, you're there like trying to bite like biting your own tongue like oh, I don't want to say anything that's when you do need to talk so it's again it's these little things that you that you pick up along the way um but I yeah like yeah, I, mean, I, I was I was the opposite I was shy timid didn't say boo to a goose because I was absolutely petrified of getting told off um and yeah when it comes when it comes to comes that I just think it's fascinating but yeah you, again yeah you set me off you said, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love people that now. talk. <laughs> love it. Well, thank you for being hey, such you. a fantastic guest. Hey, thank, thank you. you Take me. care, my lovely. <laughs>